And the investigation begins. There are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall. Although some are more like mallets. Mallets? Could the justice hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all the hammers here have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all. And it's wet. Did someone wash it recently? Spotless hammer has been added to the truth bullets. Guess we'll talk to Sakura. There are many aspects to the incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Considering that, it may be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then. Would you like my help? Yes. Yeah, let's look back on things. Mm. This morning, only four of us met up at the dining hall Hina, Kyoko, you, and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up. So we decided to go look for them. Hmm. It was around 8 o'clock when we began our search. And soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. Hmm. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, then quickly came and got you and me. According to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her. Meaning, just after 7 o'clock. Hmm. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robo-Justice. It also became clear that this Robo-Justice had dragged Yifumi away. Huh. After meeting up with Toko and Byakuya, we began searching for the costumed assailant. We found an injured Yifumi in the library on the second floor. We took him down to the nurse's office on the first floor, then resumed our search. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... What's wrong? I saw a shadow. Something moving around at the top of the stairs. Based on Celeste's claims, we went back up to the second floor where we split up and began searching. Then right after that... Hmm. Celeste screamed. This time she had apparently seen the suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we quickly made our way to the third floor. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I, I saw him, the strange costume man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Mm. And then... Huh? But what was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that point, we decided to split up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back into the nurse's office. Meanwhile, you, Byakuya, and Toko pursued the suspect up on the third floor. And when we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi's corpse, which is also when we heard the body discovery announcement play. 
I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what happened. However... But at the same time, we had discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. Which means if Fumi and Taka's bodies were discovered right around the same time. Because I remember hearing the body discovery announcement play right after finding Taka. And that's when I showed up and told you and Byakuya that Hifumi had been killed, right? Then you, me, and Byakuya all headed back to the nurse's office, leaving behind Toko, who had fainted. But as soon as we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who had just arrived to tell us something very unusual. Hifumi's body has disappeared! We hurried back to the nurse's office to discover this corpse was, in fact, gone. <laughs> Then we remembered we had abandoned the unconscious Toko, and rushed back to the equipment room. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? This time, Taka's body had disappeared. So from there, we began our search for both of the missing bodies. And after some time... Celeste told us she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. And there we rediscovered the two bodies that had apparently vanished. And that brings us up to now. However... Looking back, things have certainly been very active. If you want to look back at the case again, just let me know. I'm fine any time. Well, that was certainly a nice recap. Let's investigate Taka. Taka will never move again. According to the Monokuma file, he died from a blow to the head. We found Justice Hammer 4 near his body in the equipment room. Is that what was used to kill him? And there's a tarp laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? That way there wouldn't be any blood left behind while the body was moved? Blue Tarp has been added to the truth bullets. We also need to investigate the apparently dead Hifumi. Hifumi's big, cold body is laying on the floor. His really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? The nurse's office, where he was discovered to hear the repository? All the way from the first floor to the third? And all without anyone noticing it? How the hell? It's no good, I just don't get it. I can think about it later. For now, I have to finish investigating Hifumi himself. Now, if I remember correctly, Hifumi's fatal injury was also a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which was laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Wait. Something's off about his body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's... different. Something about Hifumi's body in the nurse's office versus his body right now. That's it! His glasses! When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But now they're completely clean! Does that mean someone wiped his glasses off? But who would do that and why? And that has been added to the truth bullets. So we done investigating Hifumi? What's this dolly back here? Did we check this yet? I don't think we did! It's a dolly. It doesn't have a handle. I saw this in the art room before. I guess it's used to move statues around. It's kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use. Oh, but wait. Wasn't this in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. There's blood on the wheel of the dolly that was moved from the equipment room to the repository. What's the explanation for that? Repository Dolly has been added to the Truth Bullets section of your handbook. So we investigated the Dolly, Hifumi, we spoke to Sakura, we investigated Taka, we investigated Hifumi. We did not check this side of the room yet. I guess I could talk to Hina. So, um... Hey, um, Makoto, I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. Huh? What is it? Hmm. After Hifumi and Taka's bodies disappeared, we split up to look around, right? I was really scared, so me and Sakura stuck together. But... And we came right to the repository to, you know, look around. When we got here, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. It, it was locked? Hmm. And we came here as soon as the search started, so there's no way someone could have beat us here. So if that's true, then who locked it, and why is it unlocked now? I wonder the same thing. The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. There might be some secret lurking in there. But I'll probably have to leave this area to figure it out. We'll talk to Byakuya. We didn't do that yet. Byakuya, do you think Hiro really did it? Hmm. I don't see how anyone could think otherwise. 
When the attacks and murders and disappearances all happened, every one of us had an alibi. And the last thing Ifumi said when he died, yeah. He said Hiro's name. So in other words... Then there is no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it, why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe he thought that no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's the fool of the century, you see. I mean, he is kind of dumb. But do you really think that's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. What? And is that it? That's all that bothers you about the case? Well, no, there are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? Hmm. They probably figured that if we couldn't find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. But if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? Hmm. Again, it comes back to the fact that the culprit was a moron. Is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is... Why they bother killing two people? What? What? Because all the rule says is if you can kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? So if you're the killer, your number one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances you'll get found out. I see. Hold on. Perhaps. I see. So that's what that means. I is everything okay? That's enough. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Huh? What's with the attitude? <laughs> but you have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you, I might have some fun with this after all. His mysterious words hung in the air as he left the repository. He talked as if he'd figured something out. But if he did, would it have killed him to tell me what it was? Well, that was certainly fun, talking to Biafia. Certainly worth it. They probably wouldn't even let me leave the area until I did. It was probably mandatory to talk to him, you never know. Because that's how this game works. There's only one way in and out of this room. Through the door that Hina said was locked before. There's definitely a lock in the door, but it can only be locked from the inside the repository. I don't see any way to lock it from the art room. Hmm... The door can only be locked from the inside, which makes me wonder. Hina and Sakura confirmed that the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. And the door is designed so that it can only be locked from the inside. In other words, when Hina checked it, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were done, they unlocked it and left, which is why it's unlocked now. But Hina claims there's no way someone could have beaten them to the repository. So that certain someone. Repository door has been added to the truth bullets. Hmm, there's gotta be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. There are some places I already know about. First the nurse's office where Hifumi was found. Then the equipment room where Taka was found. Ah, Celeste, good to see you here. What are you investigating, Celeste? <laughs> I am not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I am simply going around seeing if Hero might be hiding somewhere. Hmm. What about you? Oh, you know, I'm just checking this and that. The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Hifumi's body. Let's see. How Hifumi was moved, eh? When it disappeared, you were supposed to be in the nurse's office, right? Yes, Correct. Indeed. Hina was not feeling well, so I stayed behind to look after her. But she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. And when you got back, the body was gone? Hmm. We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. Yeah, Hina said the same thing. So then the killer was able to get in and move Ifumi's body in that short amount of time? Indeed. It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Ifumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of as anything less than impossible. Celeste's account has been added to the truth bullets. But there's still more investigating to do. We should probably double-check the justice hammer that is on the floor. Justice Hammer 3, the one that was used to kill Ifumi. Someone moved the body but left the weapon behind. Okay, is that all there is to it? Hmm. Is, is this a trash can or something? Just a normal trash can. There's something inside? It's too small to be a handkerchief. It's a glasses cleaning cloth. And it's got some kind of cartoon character on it. Ah, but it's also covered in blood. Oh. Ah, did you find something? Yeah, there was a cleaning cloth in the trash can. Huh? A cleaning cloth? And it's all bloody. Whoever this belongs to must have used it to wipe up some blood. But who would need to do something like that? <sighs> I haven't the slightest idea. Yeah, me either. But I think it might be important. The glasses cleaning cloth has been added to the truth bullets section of your handbook. I mean, there's also this back here. 
A refrigerator. I wonder if there's anything to drink inside. After everything I've been through, I'm totally parched. Maybe just a quick peek. There's a bunch of blood packets in here for blood transfusions, I guess. It doesn't help me, though. I'm not a vampire. There's blood packets in there. That's interesting. I don't know why it's not a truth bullet. I feel like it should be somehow. But who knows? I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away. I'm super pissed I missed such an ultimately rare event. Justice Hammer 4. The weapon that was used to kill Taka. The body was moved, but the murder weapon was just left here. Alright, pool of blood. There's some kind of tire mark going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. That reminds me about the dolly in the repository. There was blood on its tire! Could that blood have come from... here? Which could mean that Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms are on the third floor, so that should definitely have been possible. The equipment room bloodstain had been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. But even if the dolly was moved to use Taka's body, what about Hifumi? Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with the dolly, there's no way to get it up, up to the third floor. That's still a total mystery. Nurse's office. Talk to Celeste. I've, I've already been to the nurse's office and done all that. So this is where you were. I've been looking for you. You have? Hmm. I wanted to thank you for what you did. Not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Um. Hmm. You should go to Hero's room. Oh, and let me give you this. Meet in the dining hall. This is the note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up, right? Hmm. You remember well. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. It's all clear now. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? <laughs> <laughs> Things grow ever more exciting. Um, what are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't owe you any more explanation. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yasuhiro's message has been added to the truth bullets! What triggered this event?! I've been waiting for this to happen! Anyway, so he said to go to Hiro's room, but... What's waiting for me there? So neither one of us know what finally triggered Byakuya showing up to talk to advance the plot forward or whatever. Yasuhiro, where's your frickin' room? Finally found it, holy cow. The door is unlocked? I guess I can go inside. Byakuya did say to go look. It might not be a great idea, but I'm gonna take the plunge. This is Hero's room. There's all kinds of weird stuff in here. Where'd he even get it all from? More importantly, he still hasn't turned up. Which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? I think there's something in the cardboard box. It's blueprints for something, and... Some things made out of looks like cardboard, plastic, and plaster? Is this Robo-Justice? And it's in Hero's room! But wait. These blueprints. Something about them bothers me. Hmm. Robo Justice Blueprints has been added to the Truth Bullets! Let's go in the bathroom! No reason to, I guess. I soundlessly checked the bathroom. There's nothing in here, it's pretty grungy though. How's a bathroom even get this dirty? Wow, so Yasuhiro never cleans his bathroom. That's how it got dirty. Okay, we're out of here. The boxes is literally the only thing you can really look at. Makoto, big news, big news! What's wrong? We found Kyoko! What? Is she okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big news. Just a second! Robo Justice showed up too! Robo Justice? Hmm. It's Hero wearing the costume! Okay! Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor! To think Hero and Kyoko would turn up at the same time. Anyway, I have to head to the pool! I ran off to the second floor as fast as I could. Okay, so I have to, like, what? Go over there? Hi, Kyoko. Kyoko, and... I mean... Phew, man, I have had the worst day. 
hero? Dun dun dun! Busted! Totally busted! Your thoughts, Celeste? Mm. I am positive. That is a suspicious individual that attacked me. Byakuya, your thoughts? Hmm. Apparently that ridiculous object is Hero. I'd ask Kyoko for the details if I were you. Very well, Kyoko, your thoughts? Right. I found Hero. He was jammed into the pool locker room. A room locker. Looks like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and, he, and woke him up. Don't be mean! I still can't believe you kicked me! You could have been a little more gentle about it, like, I don't know, caress my face or something. What? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden, without a trace. Wow. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't never mind. It's nothing. Never mind. Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know people might think she might be spying for the mastermind? And? First of all, Hiro, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. I mean... Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have no idea. One second I was asleep, I don't even know how that happened. Then I woke up and then I was here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at it. Huh? Well, um, I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? Got it all wrong. I didn't make the stupid friggin' thing. It would seem... There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We really don't have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly, we were able to get Hero out of the suit. It took a few minutes, but eventually we got all the pieces off. <laughs> Woo! Free at last! Hmm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hero? So then... More to the point, nobody but Hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Wait, what? Hold, hold on a sec. Honestly... Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. Is that okay? In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. <laughs> That's true. I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be... Then it's obvious the one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone... That's terrible! ...was Hero! <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Just the worst! Good idea! We wouldn't want him killing anyone else! What? What? tie me up! H hold on, guys. I think that's going a little far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, um... Attacking? Blueprints? I have no idea what you guys are talking about! You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed them. Please. What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. What are you saying? You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else could possibly be the costumed attacker? What the heck? Hey, how do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me. Okay. Fine, if you're going to be a jerk about it, I will. Without missing a bit, Hina started putting on the Robo Justice costume. Huh. See, look. See how loose it is? I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. In a huff, Hina took the suit back off again. Oh. Well, now you're all out of excuses. Um... No, 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 see, it's because you're a girl. If it was another guy, then... <laughs> Makoto, go ahead. Okay. Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. It's no good. The arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. Just a second! See, I told you it was impossible. <laughs> you are absolutely right. 
It seems this costume was made to fit Hero's body exactly. But... Then there's another costume. They must have one that looks the same, but, but fits them. Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? <laughs> you claim there is another suit, yes? Then you must find it and show it to us. <laughs> what the heck? Just the worst. Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi during this whole thing anyway. That's terrible. Which is how we know it was him. I mean, is that really, too, really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone, like, tell me? RoboJustice costume has been added to the truth bullets. My, my, my. I haven't talked to Hina yet. There's no talking your way out of this one. You did it. Everyone knows it. He has a hero. What the heck? Um, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I figured that out. Someone's been killed, right? Hey, Makoto, who was it? Well, two people were killed. T Taka and Hifumi. What? what? Two people? Just the worst. Why are you freaking out? You did it. Please. I did not. Huh? Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed... How about that? That's it. I know who did it. So then... You may as well tell us then. Hmm. Taka and Hifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? I'm at least 30% right! Which means Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it! Correct. I see. That That's unfortunate. Please! Huh? Unfortunate? What the heck? Stop trying to trick us. Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um... I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh, so uh, then... I know! That note! Note? Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. But the last thing I remember is going to the rec room, and then for some reason I fell asleep. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me or something. Just the worst. Not a chance. So... No, hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Huh? What, really? I told you, someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage, a chance to escape, someone wrote that all to trick me. Even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. Well, after being trapped here so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? <laughs> they preyed on my desire to get out of here, they deceived me. I still don't buy it. Don't be mean! Well, you should buy it. Just a second! Okay, then show us that note. Hmm. With pleasure. I have it right here in my, um, pocket. No way. It looks like I lost it. Uh, yeah, sure. Please. please, you gotta believe me. I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim. But if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. Uh, what the heck? For serious? Yasuhiro's account has been added to the Truth Bullets section of your handbook. <laughs> now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it! What the heck? Why did you kill them? Tell us, Hero! Uh... No, it's like I said! Just the worst! Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You, you must be totally broke, and that's why... Oh, wait, that's a false accusation. Someone help me. What are you saying? Just be thankful we haven't bound and gagged you. Hmm. If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? What? What? Oh, you're right. I need to look for the second suit in that note. Feet, don't fail me now. I guess I'd better get back to guard duty. I was going to ask Toko or Genocide Jack to switch with me. Hmm. But if she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye. One by one, everyone peeled away. Makoto. Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? I want you to help me with the investigation. It would seem... It looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Sure, I don't mind helping, but can you promise me something? Later, when we have time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why is that? No. To reject me so simply. Anyway... Anyway, I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Now then, shall we? Very well. Hey. 
So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses? I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than the living. Hey. Wouldn't you agree? How, how am I supposed to answer? Anyway... Anyway, we have to hurry before the class trial begins again. Yeah, you're, you're right. Okay then, show me where the bodies are. They're in the repository. I guess we should head that way for now. Oh, oh, I have to actually go there. They're not gonna teleport me there, all right. So back to the repository, which is in the art room. Ifumi and, and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to go rigid. But only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth, she was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was made me feel a little more comfortable. So have you found anything I cool? See. Makoto, I found something. You did? Hey. You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore in his left hand? He did? <sighs> Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? No, that's not it. Anyway, so you said he had a watch? So then... Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It most likely broke when he had his encounter with his assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past six o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after six? That's right. But last night, Taka's watch definitely was not broken. Hey, you! How long were you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced through the air as he stared pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that? Bedtime for all the little boys and girls. In other words... So, if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning, it must have happened at 6 this morning. Booyah! Broken wristwatch has been added. However... And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's something white in there. Makoto. Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because... Rigor Mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice-cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? Hey. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? Is that right? I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to hit Fumi's body. So then... Let's check Fumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. Cool, I got the scrap of paper. Added to the truth bullets. Do I just talk to you again? So did you find anything? Indeed. I did. More than expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper? That's right. Hifumi had it hidden on him. Hidden? Indeed. He stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he'd hidden it on purpose, you see. I in his pants? Wait, so you... Why is that? It was just his pants, not like his socks or something. I don't know what that means. Hey. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note? I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So... That sounds very familiar. That's it. It's the same thing Hiro said. And he was telling us the truth? However... Although it's not exactly the same, is it? The meeting time is different. Uh, um... Yeah, because when Hiro recounted what it said, he mentioned that it was the hole they could use to escape, and they were going to meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. It's different. The time is different. Hiro told us that his note said to meet at 1 a.m. The note they wrote to Hifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Hifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Huh? So... Part of it has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped? Um, could you maybe explain it a little more? Think carefully. Hey. Why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I, I have no idea. So then... What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. 
The Nodifumi hat has been added. Nice. Hey. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time, right? Is that right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. All I said was that they weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. But if Kyoko thinks it's important, I'd better keep it in mind. E-handbook has been added. Oh, here we go. We found all the clues, and now it's time for the class trial! <laughs> here we go. Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks, like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> See you soon. I love Monokuma. It would seem he's like the perfect villain. It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest for yourself and come to the proper conclusion. Yeah, you're right. Shall we go? Well, we'd better get going. Okay. Let's drink some water! <laughs> anyway. 